Okay, hello everybody. My name is John Healy and it's always good to talk. My show is called It's Good to Talk, sponsored by LithiMoving.com. My guest today is James Dennison from Sligo in Ireland. His industry is film, video recording and graphic design. We all know back in the day, weddings, you'd have a video guy going around, making everybody look beautiful at the wedding and all that. And before that, I guess, there was an ordinary guy with a camera. And before that, who knows, I guess rich people had an artist to paint the happy couple. Where I am from Mayo, we couldn't afford that. The only artists we had, they were drawing the dough. James, hello today and welcome. Good to have you with us. And we'll get an insight into your industry. How old were you when you started and why did you start? All right, John, thanks. Thanks for having us anyways. And um, John, I first got started, I suppose, when I was about 18. I, when I started in college, I actually done a course in college called industrial design. And then um, that's more commonly known now today as product design. So that that could be designing a clock for a house. It could be designing a car. It could be designing a poster. It could be designing anything, anything, household items, anything in the industry. So that's how I first got started. And part of the industrial design was a lot of graphical design, obviously, because you have to draw whatever concept you come up whatever idea you come, you have to give a indication of what it is. Computer aided drone was just kind of young enough at that time. So a lot of it was hand drawn and stuff like that. So that's how I got into the graphical element of that, of design. And I always kept that up because I always liked it. And um, part of that course then also was the, you dabble in website design and stuff like that. Um, at the time though, I was doing a part-time job in the cinema as well. And I got an interest in the film side of things. Um, and I was kind of surprised when I seen that the course I was doing, you, you could do a, after the first three years of the course, you could do a further year in with a digital media, which involved video and uh, audio production. So that's how I got into that end. And when I, when I started that, I went up to Letterkenny to do that. And when I started doing that... in County Donegal, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Letterkenny is just north of Sligo. Okay. So about an hour and a half drive, hour 40 minutes drive from Sligo. So uh, that's where I got start doing digital media which involved website design video audio production etc so that's where i got into the film side of things after leaving college you know like most people i found it hard to get work in the industry and i kind of fell into more installs i was working in dublin at the time and it was more installation so you'd be going into say a bank or a college or a whatever it could be a pharmacy and you might be putting in tv screens sound systems uh projectors stuff like that so i was still i was in i was in the in the industry, but not in the industry the way I want it to be, if you get me. Yeah. So, so the crash putting cameras, would you be, like say putting in cameras into retail stores like clothing stores yeah. and all that? Yeah, you would have. You would have been. So you'd that. be a good guy to know. You'd be a good guy to know where the hidden spots are in the camera. Like if, yeah, I, yeah. if I wanted to win and like steal a shirt or a jacket, and you said, "Oh, there's no camera covering over there," I'd deny yeah. that corner. Yeah, I'm, well, just being, that's I'm just being funny well, because the camera can't really, I guess, cover every well, maybe nowadays, yeah, every square inch. And maybe with new technology, it might track the likes of me going into a store and the camera could follow me around and watch what I'm buying. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'm not a good shopper, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> not a good shopper for either. Say, when you, when you were a child, had you like an interest in drawing yourself or cartoons or was yeah, it some well, creativity? Yeah, yeah, no. When I was a kid, when I was a kid and was growing up, I always had an interest in art, and I actually, um, I think I actually have a couple of medals here. I won in the Fesh, you know, the oh, Fesh good. over here in Ireland. I do indeed. So when when I was younger, if you if you bear with me, do you mind if I? Sure, totally, yeah, of course. Let's see. And while I'm waiting, James designed this uh, big banner behind me because I produced a book for Stony McGurn called "And That's How It All Started." So James helped me with that. He also helped me with designing posters like this meet the artists where I bring art people together and all that yeah. so I have worked with James down the year and yeah. I find him easy to work with and I hope he finds me easy to work with too but go ahead show us the medals what are these are medals I won when I was a young man uh, right. like only four or five. <laughs> oh, <laughs> four or five. Oh, four or five I tell you the fesh liggy so that was yeah. one and that was a silver in the fesh liggy right I won that in 19, 1987 there's a date on oh. it very excellent to the fourth 1987 and i actually have the picture that i drew to win that silver medal oh i'd love I'd to see it i'll show it to you now see at four years old see you know you can never be too young to start your creativity i pick i still have the picture today wow that's and i can tell you an interesting story about that yeah 
Now, if you see, that's a cat fish. Yes. So you can see that the cat, at the time, I was living in my granny's house. Myself, my mother and my twin brother were living in her granny's house. And she used to have an ornament on the mantelpiece. And it was a glass, a multicolored glass of a fish. Okay. And that was the same color as it. So that was right. the fish's tail. Right. So, and then obviously I liked cats and there was cats going around the house. So I said, mm -hmm. I, I, even at four or five, whatever it was at the time, I thought, um, you know what, I'd love to, you know, draw a cat and put the fish some way in together. So I put, I said, I'll draw a catfish. Mm -hmm. so that's what I was doing. So there's the cat and there's the, I put the fish's tail on him. So, mm -hmm. but then when I was going for the medal, or when I was going into competition, the, the judges thought that I put, they said, they said to my mother, I would have won gold. Yeah. Only for, I gave the cat one, two, three, four, five legs yeah. and a tail. It probably, it probably it has wasn't. happened in real life. Yeah, but it wasn't five legs and a tail. It was actually four legs and it was a fish's tail I put on him as a catfish. Oh, like that a that me, And that's what cost mm. me gold in 1987. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, lucky the cat didn't eat the fish, you know? Well, that's true too. Yeah. But, <laughs> that is true. But I think maybe if I got gold back then, it might inspire me to go a little bit further. But look, you know, we never. Oh, well, I think I think you're you're doing very well. Now, yeah. since the Corona pandemic and COVID and all that, your whole industry has changed like oh, yeah. dramatically. Yeah. I mean, five years ago, nobody would consider doing a video of a funeral or a wake or someone dying. I guess weddings was all the, the big business for you then. Mm -hmm. So explain to my listeners and viewers about the Corona situation and how that created a new industry. Okay. A new part yeah. of your yeah. industry. Yeah. So my, my industry now is primar primarily video production or was before COVID. It's primarily video production and also graphic and design. So by that, I mean that it would be traditional form media, as John just explained there, that I would have been going, say, to a wedding or a company and I'd be going and filming something, bringing it home, editing, and then delivering the final product, the video. So it could have been a wedding video. It could have been a promotional video for a company. It could have been a documentary or it could have been some TV show for TV. So it ranged a lot of that. When Corona hit there last, say, March or April, when it first hit, Within a two week period, all them jobs that I'd say for different factories and um, places in Sligo and around Ireland and abroad, they all got cancelled. So I was thinking to myself, oh my God, like, you know, everything, everything's cancelled. Like, well, what's going to go on? But I found that only lasted for about two or three weeks. And then everyone, everyone kind of scrambled to go online. Now, we were lucky enough in 2018, we invested a lot of money in some live streaming equipment. So we have multi-camera setups so we can go into a place anywhere, really, because uh, of a mobile studio. We can go in, put up four or five, six cameras, mix them live, and stream out to the web from there. So that's what happened. Everything went online. So we got inquiries initially um, for people looking for, say, live streaming of funerals. Yeah. At the time, we thought, you know, it's a, it's not something that, you know, we heard of, as John said. It wasn't something, you know, wedding videos and all that. But it was mainly for people that... A lot of people say, for example, one person that was deceased, she had a son in New Jersey, in America, and she had a daughter in Australia. So they couldn't come back with travel restrictions to the yeah. funeral. They wanted to be part of the funeral. Yeah. So what we did on, we went into the church, we set up our cameras. We normally put them in discrete locations. So it could be yeah. behind the flower, it could be up in, if there's a gallery wow. or a balcony in the, wow. in, the, in the church. So we try and stay out of the way. We can't have these can long lenses. Right, right behind the Blessed Virgin, yeah. Could be behind the Blessed Virgin. <laughs> uh, generally up in the balcony, maybe, or someplace like that. Um, uh, and we use long lenses so that we could get in to, you know, get close. So a lot of churches and venues might these days have a webcam at the back of the church, which would be a big wide camera getting in the whole church. Uh, well, we, we'd be kind of giving shots, like, you know, if you're watching a TV show, you're getting a mid-shot like that. We'd be kind of getting up close and personal. So people find this more intimate. Uh, right. experience by watching it yeah. plus we also put the graphical element so before the broadcast starts mm -hmm. we would put up a picture of the deceased uh, mm -hmm. you know a little paragraph about yeah. them when the show starts or when the when the broadcast starts uh, if there's a vicar or a priest doing the, the mass mm -hmm. their name up uh, if anyone's doing a reading or prayers of the faithful or stuff like mm -hmm. that their names and come up in real time so yeah, I've seen a good few of the videos you've done for the funeral yeah. and I must say 
it, I, I thought they were excellent because it brought me back to Thanks. where I am from at home in Denmoy in County Mayo. Mm. And mm. even one was of my school teacher that passed away. Yeah. And I could, I could see all the, well, her home and her family and my neighbors mm. and my brother and my sister and everybody in the church. Yeah. And I also enjoyed what they do. And because I don't go to church myself, but I like to look in. But because you never know, just in case. But um, like, the music at church and the choir and the singing. So it is, even though the person has died and deceased, there's an aspect of entertainment to it. And that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Something else you mentioned there, and I must catch up on it, is like documentaries that you've done in the past. Mm. Could you explain a little bit about document, documentaries or films, maybe, or films that you're working on at the present? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the past, we've done a number of mainly documentaries, some short films. Um, I've worked, say, on feature length films, but more in a crew capacity. So I'd go in as a cameraman or I'd go in as a, as a sound guy or I might go in in the lighting department. So I'd just be part of the crew. But ones that we've actually produced ourselves, kind of devised, filmed, edited, kind of produced, direct, maybe directed, um, would include one is The Making of a Medium. Which the Making of the Medium. Making of a Medium. What, 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 what is that about, actually? It's about a local man here, actually, in Sligo, his name is Sean Conway, and he's just a regular Joe Soap, works in done stores and checkouts, uh, you know, has a wife, two kids, works nine to five, goes home in the evening. Ordinary you know. guy. Yeah, 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 ordinary guy. But he has a secret, and not so much of a secret now, but throughout his life, from childhood, he's seen and conversed with spirits of people of the dead. So it's basically, the, the film is a light, his life story about how when he was a young man, for example, he be lying in bed. He had an identical twin brother and was growing up in that. In like, like yourself, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of similarities between the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I guess your, your spirit is more Paddy or Jimison. Yeah, well, that's it. You know, right yeah. after a few of them, I do be saying a few things. I don't yeah. know what they are. But, but um, um, he was growing that, up. That's, that's, look, go ahead, explain him to the end. He was growing up, he, was, he shared a bed with his twin brother. And a night to go to sleep and... He might see the wardrobe opening and it might be a cowboy or a guy from the war would walking out of the, the wardrobe. And this guy's only like four or five at the time. Mm-hmm. So he'd be trying to wake up his brother and say, look, mm-hmm. you know, look, do you see that? And his brother Liam, he'd be turning around and saying, no, like, what are you on about? Are you crazy? So, you know, he always, then he'd say to his mother and she'd say, oh, you stop, don't be talking about things like that. You know, that doesn't exist. So he, he kept all that, this secret mm-hmm. throughout his lifetime until... In his mid twenties, it started coming back, and he just said, "Look, you know what? The hell with it." And he found the spiritual mother, another medium, who actually says, "No, look, you're not crazy. There's loads of people out there. You're just one of the gifted ones." So it's his story then, how he actually goes around and tries to help people in the present day. So say, oh. Don, if you had a spirit or something in your apartment and were making noise at night, no, oh, I do. Sleep, he'd yeah. be the man to call. Yeah. Now I can show. I got the DVD here. I show you the DVD cover. Okay. Yeah, a, lot of creativity in, a lot of creativity in flight with spirits. Yeah, there is. There it is. Okay, I got it. Yeah, the making of a medium. Of, yeah, I, I like the design as well. Yeah, and that's yeah. him there at the back. Okay, excellent. That's him. We'll, the yeah. Order, and so that's it's called the making. The, the making of the making of a medium is the name of the. the yeah. Yeah. So that's one can, project we've done. Yeah. Of course, we've worked with yourselves in the past with. Uh, um, just one second there. Let's see, moving dot com. Let's see, moving. We've done a few uh, projects with yourselves, and we also. Worked with Stoney in producing Stoney, his DVD. Yeah. So I have a copy of that here. I'll just try Stoney, and get it. Stoney, no, you're okay. Stories by Stoney on yeah. DVD. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Where do you see, say, now that things are coming back to as near as normal as possible? And I hope everybody in Ireland is getting their vaccination and all that, and that things will be getting better and better. Say, the year ahead for you going forward, will it be a mix of weddings and funerals? Or more, or is there more film work, more everything? More, well, obviously, you're a creative person, so you know, and you're a busy person too. So, what do you, how do you see your future, say, for the next to the end of the year, and then going into the, the next year again? Yeah, okay. Uh, the last, the last year has been mainly we've gone into a lot of virtual sphere, so we've been doing a lot of in-person or virtual events and conferences like we do a lot of funerals we're also doing a lot of events conferences for people like the irish farmers journal where we bring people in say on zoom bring in a few people but we'd actually maybe put fancy backgrounds have people remote dial in asking virtual questions and stuff like that so we're doing a lot of that and mm-hmm. um, 
I think when things open up here, a lot of that will die off because people will want to get out and meet people. Like, for example, we done a conference there in RDS in Dublin, in mm. Ireland, before Christmas, and it was just, it was an award show, but it was totally virtual. So there was a presenter in there joined by one person, and then there was naming out awards, and people were coming in virtually accepting the awards. In the future, people will be doing that, but I think for conferences and stuff like that, there is the networking element, so people will want to come in, you know, and meet people, go to the expo, so it's a networking opportunity. But there will be some, it'll be a hybrid as such, because I think there will be some in-person element, but also some virtual element. For example, if you were to guest speaker come to a conference and he's, he's costing that you have to bring him a business class flight from maybe the US, mm-hmm. maybe from Australia, that's me, it might be 6,000 down for that, then you're putting right. him up at the hotel, you're paying their fee, right. you know, you're whining and dining them, you know. So there's a lot of economies, screen, economies of scale and yeah. savings to be made by yeah. the, 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 new, the new way to use it. Exactly. James, but I'm I mean, going to leave you shortly. How can people get in touch with you if they want to buy a video or want to book you for a funeral, want to book you for a wedding? You, What's the name of your company? Well, yeah, for live streaming, we're Studio Rove. So it's studiorove.ie, S-T-U-D-I-O-R-O-V-E.ie. And uh, if you Google Atlantic Light Productions, it's another, that's our main thing. Atlantic it's, Light Productions. Okay, I like yeah. that name. Yeah, yeah. so that'll and be... Finally, York. on the sports side of it, I'm sure you do a lot of sports videoing and sports commentary. Will Mayo ever win an All Ireland final, or should we bring back Willie Joe Patton? I, I think uh, Sligo have more chance of winning an All Ireland than Mayo these days. <laughs> That's the right. one. James, thank you so much. Very interesting insight into the background of film, documentaries, the medium. You're a creative twin, and you met another creative twin. So we'll give a shout out to all the twins tuned in. Thank you very much again. I am John Healy. And it's always good to talk. It's good to talk. Share your talk with anybody. And you can always contact me, John Healy, JH for News at yahoo.com. We'll put it on a subtitle. Thank you, James. Bye. Thank you.